Greetings everyone and welcome to a new video on my channel and today I wanted to present you a small little project I've been working on the last couple of months. So what was this project about? Probably most of you know this uh, like when you build work on a building or something like this. Uh, it just doesn't look like the right thing. Like when you see this building and you look into the windows, usually those uh, everything inside is quite flat, doesn't really have any depth to it, etc. And I've been working on a tool which would fix this. So I present you my room shader, basically. So what I've been doing is I've been working on a small little note group, which I'm going to show you here in a short moment. A little note group, which I call is the room generator. This thing would help you generate rooms out of thin air. There's no geometry behind those windows are all flat. If I go into material mode and we check out the geometry, you see there is no, there are no rooms behind. I can go inside, no rooms. If I turn back on the material, you can see the rooms are still there. Now going to the other side. Isn't this interesting? So, I set everything up in a moment and I, and I show you how does it work. So welcome back and as you can see I have prepared ourselves a small little building. It's basically just a building from the uh, introduction just with some small modifications. As you can see now all the windows are black and I got a little bit rid of the top because it's for the moment unnecessary for us to use, use or see. So um, as you can see I have one uh, prepared material here. And there is at the moment essentially nothing there, which is uh, fairly simple because uh, this is what we're going to use. This is why it's all black. So first things first, um, I start uh, everything by going here to our file settings and I append a new group. So uh, this is what you can download basically um, when I go down here, you can see here this is my file uh, parallax occlusion rooms and all you do is you go to node tree over pen and pick the room generator so once you've done that you go to group and you pick the room generator which is this thing now let's go ahead and check out which options we have so first things first what we need to determine is whether or not we need a uv map or generated it works both ways um, with generated you have some more control over how many rooms you want. With UV, uh, you can place them exactly. So uh, I will show you both both ways. But I guess we go and start with generate textures. So we go ahead, pick a texture coordinate node, and we plug the generated node into here. So now that we have this, we go ahead and we check our first option which is this object dimensions and object dimensions is basically just a parameter uh, which helps us to um, kind of determine not determine it helps us correcting some um, parallax issues so as you can see when I plug this thing in straight away we have a room and you see it's having some distortions especially when we move away you see here there's a little curve inside. This is basically just the texture coordinates for the room where it would get mapped later. Uh, and how we can fix this is basically we type in the dimensions of the object we have currently selected. So when we go ahead and we enter, sorry, uh, caps lock on, uh, 2.67 and 2.67. We have this aspect corrected, but as you can see, this is not fitting yet, so 5.44. And now when we check it out, everything's straight, no curves inside, which is perfect. So what we do next is, um, so next we have the UV options here, which are at the moment for us unnecessary. We have one slider here that we can switch between UV generated and normal generated, uh, UV texture or generated texture in a sense. So uh, this is something we don't need. 
So next thing is we check out these options here. This is gentile, uh, the generated tiling. So X, Y, and Z axis. So when I move this um, right here from this perspective, when I do this, you can see there are some uh, walls sliding in basically. So after we've done this, uh, what we can do now is we can try to um, align these with uh, walls kind of the outside mesh. Uh, it works perfectly fine if you plug in a mapping node in between the generated and the texture. So what we can do is, for example, we move this a little, so this lines up here. And we move this, slide it around, so it um, sort of aligns here. So now we have uh, all rooms separate, basically. So what we're going to do next is basically we just uh, replicate this for the other side. It should be basically the same dimensions. So 0 0.11, 0 0.11 here. So that is that. Uh, so we can see everything better. I say we now go ahead and plug in a texture here, just an image texture. You can choose whatever you want. You can also later on use those masks, seals, uh, walls, ceiling and floor to kind of separate the textures, but we go into the detail, go more into detail later. So first of all, we pick a texture. Uh, in my case, I just pick a wall texture. Let's see what I have. Just something which is easy to notice uh, and easy to, to, to see. So now we have our rooms and what we see is basically nothing yet. Um, oh, well, we see the rooms basically, but the texture is very stretched. So what we go do is we go ahead, count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 layers, something like this. So we tap it in here, tiling, and probably we'll need it to adjust it a little bit. So we see here everything's fine, this is going lower and lower and lower. So we might need a little more, uh, more of that sense. That's, that looks perfect. I guess this is something we can use. So, now we have our rooms. So far, so good. Um, now what we can do is, we can play a little bit around with the room settings beneath. So, the first thing, for what we have is the depth control. With this, we can slide uh, the, the, the back side wall forwards and backwards. Um, this can be random like this so you can give some random value to it or you just leave this out um, this is just only partially working with UV generated maps it works better mm, with generated textures uh, other controls we have are the minus X values uh, the X values minus X and plus X which generate uh, which basically just refer to this so like when we slide this up, we can uh, see kind of the rooms expanding into this direction, even though it makes no sense at all, because like it's not dimensionally correct, but with this you can kind of expand the rooms uh, further into the distance. Um, standard value is minus five and plus five. And we have the Y value, which is going up. Like when we do this, you can see it's coming a bottomless pit, basically, or a very high ceiling. <laughs> and then we have the light settings, and this is where it's getting interesting because I've built in a some sort of generated lighting. Yeah, uh, you have this thing here, which is the light pass, and when we plug this in, you can see. It does some um, effect like some 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 gradients from top to bottom here on the side walls and something which might be a light source or something like this. So it kind of fakes some sort of lighting and together of course with some fake ambient occlusion. So what we can do is we take this and we add a shader. And we say this is an emission shader with light pass into the strength. 
and now it looks like this if we add this as well we have our rooms basically lit yeah um, we can constr uh, control everything with the light strength so make the light stronger or weaker until it's totally black and we can also control the ambient occlusion which is this um, yeah, and then we have the random seed, which is basically just if you use something like this, use the random seed and you can change the, um, how to say, you can just basically change the seed yeah, <laughs> of the random. So, what's next? We have an output for random mask here, which means that for each window, you get a random value. With this, for example, you can do some simple tricks like if we split this up, uh, separate RGB, and we use a little ramp, something like this. We pick the red value and we multiply it with our light strength. So now we can simulate that the light of some rooms is turned off. If we get rid of the diffuse map, it's even getting pitch black. Something like this might be very realistic. So what else we can do is we can control the um, light heat, basically. So we can say, yeah, we want some yellow light here and some more red light there. And we just go ahead and multiply our here with our texture and ta -da, we have some this is a very strong red something like this it looks more organic it looks more natural um, and also go to blue light even though this looks like discotheque uh, blue light sometimes you have office buildings or something like this rather something cold like white light or something or so but if we imagine this might be a flat or something like this maybe warm um, uh, what else do we have? Yeah, as I said before, we have uh, a path kind of to differ uh, differentiate between walls, ceiling, and floor. So we can do something like we copy this texture here, and we go ahead and maybe take some wood panels for the floor. So we plug in the coordinates here as well, add a mix RGB node, and we say this is our floor. So when we look down, we see we have a floor here. And if we take this even further, we say, yeah, we want to have a ceiling. The ceiling could be um, maybe some wooden panels. Like, um, oh, let's take this. Even though I think it might not tile so well, but it should work for this for the demonstration purpose. So we have this here, and now we have some. Nice ceiling. So uh, what this helps is basically if you have some um, camera flights around a building or something like this and you see it from different angles, it just looks a little bit more organic. Like um, when you pass by a tall building or something like this, glass building or so, it would look different from the bottom but if you fly above it would look different from the top. You just have the wooden panels here and the ceiling panels there. It's just looking a little bit better. And we come to the very last pass, which I give you an output here. And this is the normal pass. The normal pass uh, orientates kind of to the uh, normal direction of the object. So if we go and we check, it should be here. Red cap. So perfectly. Okay, never mind. Um, if we just output the normals here, you see this is red. This is. It's just kind of defining the direction of each thing. And if we use this, we can differentiate even better. With this, you can also say uh, um, kind of separate all the walls. So you can say all the green walls here. They have this texture, all the red walls have another texture, etc. You, I hope you all guys all know how 
This works. So, um... Now let's come to the UV map. Because the UV is a little bit special and a little bit different to the generated map. So what we do is we take the UV node from here and plug it into UV and we go to here. So, um... This looks a little bit crazy. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to just select one of this, just for demonstration purpose. Go to the UV editor and we click unwrap. Now you might notice that this um, okay. You might notice that this looks a little bit twisted. This is because we are having the UV map turned into the wrong direction. If I turn this around, in this case minus 90 degrees, uh, you see that there's a room now. However, it seems to be having some little problems. And I'm back again, and I'm sorry for this inconvenience. I was using a wrong <laughs> version of my map. So uh, this should be the correct one now. And as you can see now, the dimensions of the room are fixed. So what we can do is basically we can do the same thing as before. We can tile it. But what's more important is we can kind of adjust the size individually. So if we go and put it here, and we make some... Let's make this four rooms, tiles, whatever. Is... Uh, first of all, we need to rotate. Um, rotate them by 90 degrees. Now everything is a room here. What we can do is we can, for example, go ahead. Um, project from view here. With bounce. And rotate them by 90 degrees. And now we have a very big room which is kind of filling the size of two or four, four, four spaces and kind of small rooms around here. What we can also do is we can put two rooms together, like in this case. Rotate them, and in this case we should maybe make them a little bit smaller. So, so now we have a two room here, uh, maybe some um, squashed. This usually doesn't work so well, so you should try to keep everything into a square, at least the size it should be. Uh, you can also make it small, you can make it big, but always keep in mind that um, the shape you kind of you unwrap should resemble the size inside here, preferably a square. So if I go ahead and unwrap this, it's a little bit smaller, that would be the best case. I'm sorry. What you can also do is you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger. You have a you can have a very tiny room for a very uh, very tiny window for a very big room, and so on. So the limitations with this method are endless. But there's one downside. Um, if you have a room which is kind of the size of the UV square, you can't have random lighting or something. What you have to do in order to get something, achieve something like this, you need to um, move the kind of UV coordinates of this room one increment away. Something like this, now it's black. Move it down. Like this. We can move it down further and see if there's, yeah, there is one other room coming. So this is a little bit of a downside. This is why I would usually suggest you to, um, for instance, use um, generated instead. Or, what you can also do is you can select a big bunch of rooms like this and have them aligned next to each other. But this is a little bit of a um, tricky thing. Go ahead, you say, yeah, uh, uh, project from you, 
found and you make them big, something like this. But uh, this uh, only works in limited ways and usually you still have to adjust them. So UV, UV mapping gives you a little bit more of control while generated uh, gives you more randomness. <laughs> So yeah, I hope uh, you found this video useful. You can download everything for free. Uh, there's a link in the info box. Just click the link, download it. You can also leave some, uh, a little bit of money for me uh, if you appreciate my work. If not, then that's fine. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.